Welcome to the studio. Today we're taking a closer look at how this machine puts real continuous carbon fiber inside your 3D prints, making them as much as twice as strong as 6061 aluminum. This is the Fiber Seeker 3. All right, quick disclosure here. The Fiber Seeker 3 arrived with a large prototype label and I was instantly skeptical about using it. Um, I don't really do beta testing um, or, or prototype testing here at all. I'd rather have a machine that just works. Um, however, after unboxing it and meeting with the Fiber Seeker team, it was clear that this wasn't a rough prototype machine. My experience has been absolutely fantastic with this machine and a big thank you to FiberSeek for sending over this machine for me to share with all of you. For years, continuous carbon fiber printing was something that you would only find in high-end manufacturing facilities or research labs. Machines that could do it were massive, proprietary, and wildly expensive. FiberSeek wanted to change that. Their goal was simple, to create a system that allows small studios, engineers, and even makers at home to print parts with true composite strength without that industrial price tag. What makes the FiberSeeker 3 so impressive is that it brings together multiple innovations, precision mechanics, high temperature extrusion, and composite fiber integration into a package that anyone can operate from their desktop. It's a printer built for performance, not just aesthetics, but they still manage to make it look pretty good. The Fiber Seeker 3 immediately stands out for its design. It has a smoked glass front door and a matching lid that give it a modern professional appearance, while a side mounted acrylic panel lets you see the tool head in motion. The interface is a large responsive touchscreen mounted on a swivel mount that allows you to kind of tilt it up and tilt it down. It feels solid and intuitive. Inside, the cable routing and motion system are exceptionally clean. Everything about this machine feels deliberate and refined. And I really think that that makes sense because Anisoprint, the company that uh, basically came along and built FiberSeek, right, this is what they do. On the back of the machine, you'll find the filament spool holders for your standard materials that this machine is capable of printing, like PLA, PTG, ABS, ASA, and nylon. It has a tool head that can print up to 350C. On the right side, behind a magnetic access door, sits the spool for the continuous carbon fiber, and that's actually where the magic begins. But it is missing one huge feature, and we'll talk about that when I share who this printer is and isn't for. The Fiber Seeker 3 uses a dual nozzle system, two standard filament inputs and one dedicated carbon fiber channel. The left nozzle has a unique flat face tip that presses the continuous carbon fiber directly into the molten polymer, embedding it within each layer. This process, known as composite fiber co-extrusion, CFC, creates true structural reinforcement rather than just mixed in fiber particles. The result is remarkable. Printed parts that can achieve tensile strength comparable to, and in some cases, exceeding machined aluminum. You're not just printing prototypes anymore, you're creating usable components that can take real stress loads. To make it accessible, FiberSeeker uses their own slicer called Aura. It's modern, fast, and designed specifically for composite 3D printing. In Aura, you can choose your base material, set how many reinforced printers you want, and even decide which layers should include fiber reinforcement. It's precise, flexible, and simple enough for anyone comfortable with 3D printing. The FiberSeeker 3 operates in three distinct performance modes, and understanding these is the key to understanding how this machine actually integrates continuous carbon fiber into its prints. High speed mode is your FDM only mode. This is where the printer uses the right nozzle and behaves much like any modern Core XY system, capable of speeds up to 500 millimeters per second. If you want fast prototyping or standard functional prints without fiber reinforcement, this is the mode that you'll spend time in. High strength mode is where things get interesting. In this mode, the printer combines traditional FDM printing with CFC, that's your composite fiber co-extrusion. That means that the machine prints your normal polymer with the right nozzle, while the left nozzle embeds that continuous carbon fiber into the part. You get the flexibility of plastic with the structural reinforcement of real fiber. Then there's hyper strength mode. This is the most extreme setting where the printer uses only CFC, no standard polymer lines, just continuous carbon fiber laid down into the part using the left nozzle. It's slow, deliberate, and designed for components where maximum tensile strength is the priority. It's like 
creating solid 3D prints out of carbon fiber. It's crazy. To help you keep track of everything, the Fiber Seeker 3 has a light bar across the front of the machine, and it serves two roles. The movement of the bar shows your print progress, and the color tells you which mode the printer is currently operating in. High speed mode uses green, high strength mode uses orange, and hyper strength mode is shown in purple. It's a simple but extremely helpful way to know what the machine is doing at a glance. Because the Fiber Seeker 3 runs on Clipper, it offers a familiar responsive experience for anyone who's used modern 3D printers. Print monitoring, temperature control, and live adjustments are all handled smoothly through the web interface. The Aura Slicer deserves a little bit of a special mention here for its refinement. It's built with composite workflows in mind, and it eliminates much of the complexity that's usually associated with multi-material printing. You can toggle fiber patterns, adjust reinforcement density, and fine-tune part geometry all within one clean interface. It's the kind of software experience that makes this technology really, truly accessible. I started with a few of the default demo models included on the machine, like this simple flat robot arm that I printed in Fiber Seeker's clear PETG. And when you hold it up, you can actually see the continuous carbon fiber lines in the print. It's really incredible. The structure is so rigid that I'm not kidding, it's almost impossible to flex. Like, like, I, I don't think, I, matter of fact, I know. I know that I couldn't break that. And even if I got to a point of actually breaking it, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hurt something. Um, I also 3D printed the same robot arm, again, using Polymaker's Teal PTG. So it's the same robot arm, but it's using Polymaker's new formula of PTG. And it's crazy that it's absolutely beautiful. The print quality is, is perfect. But hidden inside this beautiful PTG part is that same structural material. And to be honest with you, this is feels more rigid than their clear PTG. Now take a look at this print right here. This was actually a failed job from when the carbon fiber jammed inside the PTFE tube. I kept it as a demo because it perfectly shows what the continuous carbon fiber looks like embedded within the polymer. You can clearly see the internal structure, the parallel fiber lines running through the layers. It's a fantastic visual of how this technology works in real time. I'll talk more about the CFC jam in a moment. Now, the layer consistency is outstanding. The carbon fiber lines are laid down evenly and pressed tightly into the polymer, leaving a clean surface finish with almost no stringing or over extrusion. At normal printing speeds, the Fiber Seeker 3 delivers dimensional accuracy that rivals any high end FDM machine, but because it's just like any modern Core XY 3D printer with input shaping, you can push it as fast as you want and expect finished quality to slightly degrade. As usual, I would say just like any other 3D printer. Now, who this printer is for? Makers, engineers, small business owners, anyone who needs true structural strength in their prints. Workshops, producing jigs, fixtures, or load-bearing components. Even hobbyists ready to graduate from standard composites to real performance-grade materials. And anyone who values engineering-grade results in a compact, like, well-built package for your home or office. Now, who this printer is not for. Users who don't want to perform occasional maintenance, right? Like fixing the continuous carbon fiber jam. And anyone who mainly prints decorative models or miniatures. This machine is built for performance, really not for display pieces. Now, this is something that I mentioned earlier. I did have an issue with the CCF breaking off inside the PTFE tube, where it caused a jam that required me to disassemble the entire hot end. And then things got worse. Because in the middle of that, I pulled the wires off the thermistor and then I had to disassemble everything in order to solder the wires back onto the thermistor. But it's okay. I got it fixed. And I got it running. Um, and I'm not quite sure what caused the CCF to break off inside the PTFE tube. Um, I have my ideas, but nothing 100%. So I don't want to speculate in this video. And I've reached out to uh, FiberSeek about that. Okay, here is my personal take. After running dozens of prints, I can confidently say that the Fiber Seeker 3 is one of the most technically impressive machines that I've had in the studio. It feels like the beginning of a new category of desktop printers, one where composite strength and precision meet accessibility. It bridges that gap between hobby and professional use in a way that I didn't think was possible 
at this price point. Now, it's early technology in our space for sure, but this is built solid, runs modern firmware, and its carbon fiber integration is executed beautifully. This is a machine that's going to find its way into workshops, into garages, and engineering labs alike, and it really, honestly, it deserves to. The Fiber Seeker 3 project is officially launching on Kickstarter on November 17th. If you want to be a part of the early backers or learn more about this project, there are links on the screen and in the description to check it out. Now, you've probably seen other creators do these long Kickstarter disclaimers, but honestly, I don't do warnings. Everyone here is an adult. You understand how Kickstarter works. If it's interesting to you, go look. If not, it will be available to the general public in 2026. This machine is just getting started here in my studios. I'll be producing a much more in-depth video and likely several follow-up videos because the technology inside this machine, honestly, it deserves it. Now, the only reason I didn't go further in this first round of testing is simple. I ran out of CCF. I actually contacted FiberSeeker the very first night I started printing because I immediately knew how special this tech was and they're already sending me more spools and hopefully they'll be showing up here, I don't know, in the maybe uh, week or so, next couple days. Now, we'll also be hosting a Kickstarter launch live stream over on twitch.tv slash loyalmoses at 7 o'clock a.m. on Monday, November 17th. Um, it's going to be fantastic. We'll have live printing, we'll do some giveaways, and plenty of behind-the-scenes moments. If you're not already following on Twitch, go click that link uh, in the description or go to the one on the screen and hit follow and come hang out with us for the live event. We do fun things. It's 3D printing like I promise you've never seen before. See you there. Okay, let's wrap this up. Seriously, I really hope that I was able to convey to you just how much of a game changer that this is for desktop 3D printing. 3D prints being weak and delicate could quite literally be no more. This means any of us at home or in the shop can be designing and printing parts as strong as aluminum. It's insane. I want you to think about that for a moment. This could change everything. If you've ever wanted to print parts that can handle real world stress, functional load bearing, usable components, this machine makes that a reality. It's fast, it's powerful, and it's built with intention. And honestly, it is one of the coolest machines that I've had the opportunity to be able to use. If you found this video helpful, give it a like and consider subscribing to the channel for more in-depth content, just like this. Um, and a huge thank you to all of our YouTube members and our Patreon supporters for helping make this possible. I literally couldn't do this without you. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next one. And YouTube thinks you should uh, watch that video. So go do it. All right, thanks.